This month, we have the first installment of what will be a long-running sub-series of the Star Wars novels, the Rogue Squadron series. While back Stackpole's first outing in the Star Wars Expanded Universe was in comics, Stackpole had previously started as a writer of role-playing game materials and licensed Biotech novels first, so moving on to Star Wars novels is a logical next step. It is about seven years after the Battle of Yavin, and the forces of the New Republic are slowly pushing forward as they seek to capture the capital of the Empire and the Old Republic of Horat, Coruscant. As part of this push, the Republic military is creating a modified version of the legendary unit Rogue Squadron, designed to serve not just as a fighter squadron, but as a commando unit as well. Wedge Antilles retains command of the squadron, with his members coming from numerous worlds that signed on to the Republic and a few that haven't. While Wes Jansen and Hobby Kilvan are alive and kicking, but unavailable to join the squadron, Wedge is able to persuade Republic Command to admitting Taiko Selku as his executive officer. However, something has happened in between the comic series and this novel, and Selku is now in disgrace. He is not permitted to fly in an X-Wing and must be escorted by two armed security guards at all times. After a rigorous screening process, uh... Wedge determines that the final roster of Rogue Squadron, or the the new form of Rogue Squadron, is Rogue Null, Captain Taiko Selku, a human man, human from Alderaan. Rogue Leader, Commander Wedge Antilles, human male from Corellia. Rogue Two, Peshik Vrisik, a Bothan from Both uh, from Bothui. Rogue Three. Tarawa Ven, a Twi'lek from Reloth. Rogue 4, Briar Jace, a human from Typhera. Rogue 5, Gavin Darklighter, a human from Tatooine. Rogue 6, Rev Shell, a Shistavan from Uvena 3. Rogue 7, Rusadi Inir, a human from Bespin. Rogue 8, Arisi Delaret. A human from Thevera. Rogue 9. Lieutenant Corin Horn. A human from Corellia. Rogue 10. Orl Krug. A Gand. From Gand. Rogue 11. Lujane Forge. A human from Kessel. And Rogue 12. Andorni Hui. A, a Rodian from, well, Rodia. Of those... Our audience perspective characters are Wedge and Corin. Now, on the Imperial side, we have an audience perspective character as well. Kirtan Lore. Lore is a former member of Corsac, the Corellian Intel Security Force, and has been tasked by the leader of the current lead, uh, of the current form of the Imperial government on Coruscant, Isan Isard, the head of Imperial Intelligence, with the task of destroying Rogue Squadron. Lore has a personal stake in this as well, as he used to work with Corrin. During travel to the squadron's first uh, base on the planet Talisi, 
The squadron ran into an Imperial Interdictor cruiser who was hunting down a smuggler who had been running down supplies for the New Republic. Mirax Tarek, the captain of the Pulsar Skate. The rogues help drive off the Interdictor cruiser, but intelligence from that ship reaches Lore, and he uses that to figure out the rogues are based on Talisee. Lore advocates for a large attack on the base, but instead the commander of a nearby Imperial, Gar Imperial Garrison, Admiral Davila, instead sends a small stormtrooper commando unit against the base. The troopers are almost successful. They kill Eugene Forge and injure several of their members of the squadron before being wiped out themselves. Lore re leaves the garrison before a retaliatory strike by the Alliance levels it, killing Davila. After the injured rogues recovered, they received their first major assignment. They take part in an assault on the planet Borlius. The intelligence the Republic has received through Bothan's spies has re revealed that the base is lightly defended and, in theory, easily taken. However, the intelligence is based on Imperial official records and fails to account for several off-the-books improvements that, it, that the commander, General Avir Derricote, has made to the base's defenses. In particular, he's reactivated an Alderan Biotics facility on the planet and used the properties made from selling Alderanian uh, plant products to strengthen the shield generators and obtain additional TIE fighters. Consequently, the attack is a disaster. Two more rogues are killed, Peshik and Undorni, and several more rogues are shot down but manage to eject. Further, several Y-Wing bombers and assault shells are destroyed as well, leading to the death of the architect of the attack, L General Laren Crefe. Some intelligence obtained from Korn's astromech, Whistler, helps determine that there is a backup shield generator in the Elder Antibiotics facility, and finds a conduit that links the two, allowing for a strike to sever the conduit, followed by a commander raid to, to disable the Alderaan antibiotics generator while leaving the facility intact, and using a bombing run from the, from the uh, Y-Wings to take out the main generator. The plan is a success, and Brolius is captured. However, Isan Isard has planned for this, and has something more in store for the Republic once they take Coruscant. And even more... Helping her carry out these plans is a mole within Rogue Squadron. We pop through three different worlds here. Tholor, Talisi, and Borlius. We don't spend much time learning about these three worlds, except that Tholor and Talisi have alliance bases, with the Talisi base being in some ruins, and Borlius has an Imperial base with, well, an Alder Antibiotics facility. We learn more about Corsac, Krillian Security, the space cops of the Krillian system. They retain something of their independence from the Empire for the time, before falling more firmly under their control around the time Corrin and his fellow team members quit and went on the run. We learn about the speech patterns of the Gand. Gand only refer themselves in the first person once they have accomplished a great deed, and this is determined by their society, by ruling the ruling government, basically, of their homeworld, but otherwise they refer to themselves in the third person. This book has the first mention in the EU of the Dara 4 attack, a ambush on a Rebel Alliance supply convoy prior to the Battle of Hoth. It had previously been depicted in the Empire Strikes Back radio play. At some point between the events of the Rogue Squadron comics and these novels, Something happened to put Captain Tycho Selku under a great deal of suspicion. Wedge Antilles has repeatedly turned down promotions that would take him out of leading a fighter squadron with a degree that would impress William Riker or James T. Kirk. Peshek Vrisk is a Bothan, recommended the squadron for political reasons, but has the skills to give him a place. Was killed in action on Borlius. Narawa Ven is a Twi'lek attorney who joined the Alliance after witnessing the injustice of the Empire from the inside of a courtroom, seeing his clients repeatedly um, railroaded through the court system due to their being not human. Briar Jace is the second of the big political recommendations. Jace is a son of one of the two families who control back to production on Thyfera. However, he has the skills to back up his place in the squadron, as he is frequently in 
contention for the number one spot alongside Corin Horn. Gavin Darklighter is the cousin of Big's Darklighter and hopes to live up to Big's legacy, though not follow in his footsteps for obvious reasons. Rev Shell is a Schistofen wolfman with a death mark on his head and who is very hard to kill. Shadi Sneer is a woman from Bespin who joined the Alliance to liberate her homeworld from Imperial occupation. Lieutenant Corin Horn is a foreign member of Corsac and was formerly partnered with Curtin Lore. Horn and the rest of his teammates, save Lore, went on the run to escape the Empire, with the teammates faking their deaths and Horn being chosen to be framed for their murder. Horn's father was also part of Corsac, and before everyone's departure, was murdered by Bossack, with Lore making sure Bossack got off scot-free by claiming that, no, Bossack was just targeting a uh, smuggler who was, in fact, uh, Horn's informant, and it just so happened that Corn's dad got caught in the crossfire. Oral Quirg has a habit of referring to himself by his family name when embarrassed or ashamed. Um, in accordance with Gan custom, he does not refer to himself using a first-person pronoun. Eugene Forge is the child of a teacher who came to Kessel, one of his adult students. She is a gifted pilot, and she was killed in action on Talasia. See. And Dori Hui is a Rodian who joined the Rogues, feeling that they're probably the most skilled band of hunters in the galaxy. Wounded on Talasia and killed in action on Borlius. M3PO, or M Trey, is the unit's 3PO droid quartermaster. He has a hidden scrounge protocol that can be used to acquire equipment and a dummy terminal mode. Mirax Tarek is the daughter of a smuggler that Corrin's father put away and is currently running supplies for the New Republic aboard the Pulsar Skate. General Horton Salm is the bomber commander for New Republic forces. Trust Tycho about as far as he can throw him, provided he's throwing him into an airlock. Curtin Lore is formerly of Corsac and now part of Imperial Intelligence. He has photographic, or is it holographic, memory. He is assigned by Isan Isar to hunt down and destroy Rogue Squadron. And he has a Javert level vendetta against Corrin Horde and possesses Javert's personality as well. Isar is working to expand his sense of imagination and creativity. Ivir Derricot is the commander of the Imperial Garrison on Borlius. He had been running a number of business operations under the table after the Emperor's death, so he'd have some resources set aside in the event the Republic came knocking and the Empire didn't respond to his calls. Following Broglius's fall, he was recalled to Coruscant for a special project by Assard. And finally, of course, we have Yassan Assard herself, a.k.a. Iceheart, the Carla at the core of Imperial Intelligence. Like Dala, she was falsely accused by her contemporaries and subordinates, or I say peers and subordinates, of having slept her way to the top. Like Dala, she is utterly ruthless. But while Dala's ruthlessness burns white hot, Isard's ruthlessness is far colder, much more calculating, and she plays the long game much better than Dala does. It is implied that Isard likes to be personally present for the execution of subordinates who fail. In addition to the references made to the radio play, this book has our first references to the uh, Star Wars video games, with a training scenario being taken from X-Wing, and discussion being made about the TIE Avenger, which first appeared in TIE Fighter. If I was to draw a comparison between the first X-Wing novel and another work of fiction, it would be Black Sheep Squadron, a television series about fighter pilots during the Second World War in the Pacific Theater. We've got a fighter squadron forming and going on a series of missions with a few members being lost in action and much of the war lying in front of them as they're slowly making their way planet by planet instead of island by island towards the final objective of the conflict. Victory is likely, but not certain. 
and it is also not certain that everyone will make it to the end. The book spends the majority of the time on character development, more than like really heavy plot stuff. Developing the characters of the various members of Rogue Squadron, and in particular, Corrin and Jace. Um, revisiting the book for the first time after reading the whole series in high school, um, I am finding that it's actually kind of impressive, a lot of the small little hints that Stackpole drops here for where Corrin Horn's development is going to go in the books to come. And it's pretty straightforward and upfront that there's enough stuff being dropped here about whether or not Tycho's a mole, that it's also clear that it's a red herring. That's kind of a dead giveaway. Whoever Iceheart's mole is in the squadron, it's not Tycho. much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like sub and subscribe and click the little bell button to be notified whenever new episodes show up on my channel. If you really like the show, please consider backing it on Patreon. Backers will get their name in the credits and at higher levels you get episodes up to one week early and at even higher levels you can select what games that I do for my future Let's Plays. You can find my Patreon at patreon.com slash count zero O-R.